Welcome to the Half Done Hobbyist. My name's Simon and I'm very happy you've joined me. Today we're going to be taking a look at Uriel Ventris, one of the heroes of the Ultramarines and in my opinion he's a fantastic character. I've read all the books, I think. There might be one I've not read yet, so I think I'm in a good position to talk about him. If there's one guy that could get me to start an Ultramarines army, it's not Rabuti Gulman or Marnius Kalgar, it's this guy. He's a flawed but interesting character in an otherwise pretty straightforward chapter. I mean, everyone thinks that the uh, Ultramarines have got a stick up their bum, don't they? Uriel Ventris is one hard man. He's the kind of guy that you'd want in your corner, but not against you. He has literally been to hell and back and survived to tell the tale. I'll tell you a bit about Ventris, but I'm going to try to make it spoiler free because, or as spoiler free as I can, because I think everyone should experience the joy of reading these books on their own. He was born on Calth. Pisanius Lysan was his best buddy, going through training and all that kind of thing. He spent time in the Death Watch fighting Xenos, and then he became a sergeant of the 4th Company of Ultramarines under Captain Idaeus. So he's fought many different armies, he's fought Necrons, he's fought Tyranids, he's fought Tau, Chaos of course, during the Thracia campaign, the 4th Company of Ultramarines were tasked with blowing up a bridge to stop a large invasion force of Night Lords. Now, as per usual, something went wrong and the explosives wouldn't go off, so Idaeus had to stay back and set them off by hand, which obviously resulted in his death, and it also resulted in Ventris getting a promotion to captain. So... That was good for him, not so much for Adeus. I'm going to give a little spoiler here because this is one of the most interesting stories in his background. On the eve of battle, he abandoned his men to go off and fulfil a mission on his own. And when he got back to Ultramar, they were not happy with him. So he was punished and he was basically sent on a suicide mission. He was obviously not meant to come back from this suicide mission because it was almost impossible. But the fates aligned and he eventually came back and he got his captaincy back. There's a lot in between, but those are the headlines. So, it's a fantastic story. Along with Storm of Iron, it's one of my favourite ever Warhammer 40k books. Definitely a recommended read. Now, I have to say, the new model is a weird one. Obviously, he's crossed the Rubicon Primaris and become a Primaris Space Marine, but his face doesn't look right, his hair definitely doesn't look right, and I know they are just standard space marines, but he just there's nothing special about him. There's no X factor. I just feel that such a, a storied and focused on character deserves a dynamic, awesome model, and this isn't it. Don't get me wrong, I like the model, but there's just not that thing to make you sit up and take notice. All of these space marine models are better in my opinion, and I could have picked more examples such as the Judiciar and the Blade Guard Captain from Indomitus. So there's a Primaris Librarian in Phobos armour. He looks amazing. He's a unique sculpt. He's doing his librarian thing with, uh, with his hand. And obviously he's got his camel cloak on. So he looks totally different to anything else. Primaris Lieutenant in Phobos armour. Where he's um, leaping up for the kill with his knife. Again, totally unique. Captain in Phobos armour. Seems I like the Phobos armour. He just looks brilliant. There's detail dripping off him. He's got his um, data slate with the servo skull above it. Brilliant. Bladeguard Veterans. In my opinion, the best models Games Workshop have ever produced. And from Kill Team Pariah Nexus, there's a new Primaris Captain. And he's got his hand on the pommel of his sword. And he's cupping his bolter underneath. It's a brilliant model and... You will notice that. I don't think you'd notice Ventress as a special character on the uh, tabletop. That was me only choosing Primaris 2. If you go into the Firstborn models, there's a whole lot of other cool ones, like the uh, Blood Angel's Chaplain with the wings on his jump pack. Probably my favourite Firstborn Space Marine model. The sculpt does have a lot going for it. It's got detail all over it. I've never seen chapter symbols on someone's heels before, but Ventress has them. And the rose pinning the cloak at the shoulder is really cool as well. Other than that, it's just a wee bit generic. I think I'm a wee bit salty about it just because I love the stories of Uriel Ventris and I wanted him to be done justice and I do not believe 
that he has been with this model. I feel bad going in so hard on this model, but um, I know someone sculpted it and spent the time and it's a labour of love, but it's just, it doesn't appeal to me and I'm disappointed, I have to say. I would be really interested to hear everyone else's thoughts on this model, especially if you've read the books and you've got an emotional attachment to the character. If you enjoyed this minor tantrum, then please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.